on this episode a new feature. We are going to add options to our game. We start small and humble. Yes. This totally works. And then things go off the rails as always. Oh, don't be afraid. The biblically accurate schmuck. Mm, hi everybody, this is Christian from Laserdisc Academy. This is the Advanced Map Tutorial, episode 85. So, um, big day today. We are going to add options to our game. I already talked a little bit about why I think options are a good idea. They make the sprite bigger, they give you more things to animate with. And uh, with options comes also the new challenge of making shots. Uh, of adding better shots system right so because right now we have like this shot and it's fine it's kind of nice to be have like this very old school focused shot it's good but um, by get, getting options in there and by having more shots a little bit of a spread maybe we get a little bit more of a strategic uh, uh, options for example by having a spread uh, you can get closer to the enemies to get more damage or further away to hit more enemies like there's just a lot more happening with the spreads now with options is like when i designed the options when i did the prototyping the options were a mess it was a messy system because i wasn't quite sure how i want to animate the options there's different ways of which options can be animated but now we have the advantage of hindsight so we can set up our options to be less flexible but more efficient maybe hopefully so um so we're gonna just straight jump straight into the kind of options i want to have in this game that's kind of like the advantage of doing the prototyping what is the requirements from the option system right that's something to think about so it will probably let's let's think about backwards from the screen from the screen pixels so when we draw the ship somewhere here we also want to draw options and it's like i want the options to be to have the ability to circle around the ship in the final prototype, we didn't actually use that. The options were just like covering next to the ship. Um, which is fine. I still want to maybe have this opportunity, this option to have this option, this ability to have options circle around the ship. So somewhere here, before we draw the ship, we have to draw some options that are supposed to be underneath the ship. And then afterwards, we're gonna draw some options that are supposed to be above the ship. And then honestly, some options, is a, it's it's just one option, right? So, uh, but I still want to maybe set up uh, like an automatic system, like a universal system that can be maybe used for something else because I have something in mind. I have a brain wave. I want to maybe use this system, reuse the system to make boss fights bigger, like to make boss sprites bigger. I want maybe bosses to also have options and they will also circle around the bosses. So um, whatever the system we came come up with, it has to be something that we maybe have can reuse somewhere else. I want to write it in a universal way so that, so that it works, maybe that you can maybe reuse it. Right, so the way we I want to set up those options is I'm just going to, I just want to have an array of objects uh, and that I can just loop through and do like a draw OBJ on them. It's, it's going to be something like this, you know? So what I'm thinking here is when we have PSPR here, we're gonna go P O P T popped player options. Oh, let's just go O O P T. Hmm. Popped is really funny. Let's go, let's let's say what popped. Uh, and it's gonna be just an empty array for now. And then just like for P in all popped. And draw OBJ. Like this, right? And nothing changes. We don't have any options set up right now, right? But it's just like, okay, okay, we're somewhere, right? And then I want to populate just this um, array with some objects that can be drawn using the using the thing here. Okay, so this is something that will happen in the update game, and it will, I think, happen. So I'm thinking here is the good place for options. <coughs> Now, here's the thing. In my original prototype, I had a, a function that populated the array with stuff. And then I have a second option that would animate them. And that was a bit tedious. Um, 
because in the end of the day, like just having all the data inside objects inside an array was like whenever you want to change something, you had to change a lot of objects. You had to like dig into the array and and manipulate values of objects. At the end of the day, all of the options are kind of moving like in a very predictable fashion. They are just like in, in a circle around the ship, right? So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to try something else in this time around. We're going to see if this works. I, I feel a bit bad about this. What I want to do is I want to just repopulate that array every frame. Like every frame, I'm going to wipe all of the options and create new options. And that always feels a bit bad. I don't think it will actually be a performance issue. Like, it, like for a human being, that seems like, whoa, you're deleting all those objects, man. But I think the PC doesn't really mind. Like if changing a variable or cr destroying an object, creating a new one, doesn't really make a difference. So we're going to see. And if we run into performance issues, we can still make it a little bit compl complicated. So opt equals, and then I, I have to write a function here, create, or like, let's do make opt. And then make opt, make, make opt is going to be the function that creates the options and it's going to be return uh, underscore r. Opt. let's return r ira right all right so this will drop objects into the and then just click to see that this works let's do something like r equals this and then i add r and then we add a new object. So now what, what does an object need in order to be drawn to the screen? We need an X, we need a Y, right? Uh, we need an Ani. Let's go to spawn and, oh, by the way, ha, here's a thing that we can delete. Right, so let's go to spawn and yeah, let's get all of the stuff out of spawn and and then we're gonna whittle it down to the thing that we actually need. Right? Bam. So 64, six, I just wanna see something on the screen, right? I need leap two, whatever. I need speed one, whatever. We don't need SX and SY. We, might, we don't need an H even. I don't know if we need an H, we're gonna see. And then HP, no. The collision, no. We need nothing from this. This is this is like a nice little simple object. Let's see if this works. We don't see a single thing. Is it the age the issue? Oh Jesus! Hiragana mode. I swear. Uh, oh, wrong comma. No. What what is? What is Anilip2? So Anilip2 should be, let, let's do something like five. That should be a, a, a UFO. What? Oh, yeah. We don't see a UFO. Why don't we see a UFO? Oh, we called it popped. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's our option. We did it, boys. We did it. It's, it's option time. Okay, good. So we have now, we can create some stuff on the screen, but it's obviously wrong stuff. First of all, let us get the actual graphic into the game, right? So I have something prepared here. Right, so I have this option thing that I can just drag and drop somewhere in here. I'm just gonna drop it in here. So that is my option. So here's the thing. I'm thinking, oops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I'm thinking that this option might, let, where, where does it fit? Where is a good place for it to go? So I'm thinking maybe trying to see if I can make the option half as big. Because if it's half, half as big, then it will fit neatly into some of the slots in here. And I think the options are a good candidate for that because we only have two on the screen anyway. The problem is when we're mirroring stuff, we kind of always uh, assume that um, the... The stuff that we're mirroring, that this is... So the problem is like when we're mirroring stuff, it always assumes that we have like an even amount of pixels, but this time around it's an uneven amount of pixels. And ugh, ugh, yikes, yikes, yikes. Uh, maybe we need to expand our system a little bit. But I want to save this for now. I'm going to load Sprite it. And let's go all the way down and go Option. 
Right, so width and height. Just, let's make it a little bit higher and then we can look for it. It's somewhere here, right? Somewhere here, there we go. That's the width, that's the height, right? And now we can maybe set somewhere. Like maybe that's a good place for the center. Now we need an effect. So one is not good. So two is the mirroring. Do we have a three effect? We don't have three. Two is mirroring, but it's the wrong kind of mirroring. We want, now it's a little too wide. It's a bit of a too chunky of an option. We need to make it a little bit slimmer. So we need to, I think, update. I know it's late in the game, but I want to update our, our um, MSPR system to uh, be able to make uh, uneven mirroring. Let's save this for now. Let's export this. This is number 51. I'm going to write this down. All right, back in Kauschmap. Let, let's see. Here's my SPR. So if it's greater or equals two, then we're going to draw this. And the position is going to be plus width minus fx minus one. Yeah, so if it's, no, fx is number minus two. So if fx is two, <clears throat> it's going to be minus zero. But if it's fx is three, then it will, it will actually, it will move, it will move it a little bit to the, to the left, I think. And I think that's how it works. And then that's going to be peachy. We're going to see if this works. We're going to save this, we're going to run this. So fx can be nil, huh? So let's see if we're going to actually create a new Anylib 51. That's our option. All right, let's go to SpriteNet and actually update our function. So this is my SPR. SpriteNet. Here's my SPR. Oh, it's a little bit different. We have to rewrite this. Like this. And then minus. Like this, let's try this. Right, so this is now effect two. This is effect three, it works, it totally works. Oh my gosh. I, I can't believe it just works. And then OX and OY are treated correctly. This is good, this is good stuff. I'm gonna actually make the center like here. Because that's how I have it in my prototype as well. And I think, I don't know, it's, it seems okay. Uh, let's just put it like here. Uh, and now export this. Uh, I had some trash in here. I want to get rid of, oh yeah, because there's like two MSPRs now. Weird, huh? Right, so if I remove this, does the other one still work? Yeah, it works, okay, good. Okay, say Sprite, it, 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 it's saved. Load couch map. As you can see, the option is also looking correctly here. That's fantastic. Now. I'm gonna do something to the to do uh, to do list. We need to update MSPR in other editors. All of the other editors need need to have these new functionalities as well. But uh, we're gonna to get to that when we're gonna to get to that. Uh, in fact, uh, we're gonna to get to it right away um, because we need to update. Yeah, we need to update the any edit. So let's save this one. Load any edit tools. Here's my SPR. Yeah, I'm just gonna replace this one. Bam. And I wanna create immediately a new animation. That's gonna be animation 14. And it will have the sprite 51. Uh, I, I'm creating an animation for this. I don't have to do this, but I think it's a good idea um, for this function to be able to accept an animation as a, as a property, as a parameter. Because again, when we create uh, options for enemies, those obviously will look different. So I want to be able to to say like you use this animation for the for the options. Okay, so immediately a couple of things that I want to clear up. The option is not following my ship. That's bad. And also the option is um, I want to be able to specify the animation of the option, right? Um, so let's 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 specify some things. So first of all, we need to maybe specify how many options we have. Or wait, 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 okay. So let's let's go like orge for origin, then number of options, then animation. 
let's make all those underscore just to be sure. And then Ani is going to be uh, Ani lib. Ani. Uh, and origin is going to be uh, org.x plus org.y plus. So we attach, we kind of, it looks like the option will be attached to a sprite. But now obviously those numbers are wrong. So let's, um, let's go with something like, I'm not sure. Let's go like 11 minus two. Just like, we're gonna, we're gonna tweak this in a second, but for now I just wanna have some numbers in here that, that feel okay. Um, right, so now when we're making the option, uh, make up, wait, I need to remember the order of, the, I hate that. That's why I hate putting things in parameters of a function. You always have to remember the parameters. So an update function. So we're gonna go PSPR, uh, we're gonna have two, and the animation is going to be 14, right? Let's see if this works. Yes! This totally works. See? Already. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right, so let us make the rest. So we want to have some amount of options, right? So not just one, but multiple ones. And uh, so we need to do like a loop for i equals one, two, huh? 0 to 1 uh, underscore num minus 1 do <clears throat> and now now we need to this is gonna be a bit, a bit weird so we're gonna have radius radius x and radius y and then we have angle like a base angle, basically, right? Uh, because what we need to do here is local oang op ang equals underscore ang plus i multiplied by uh, one divided by underscore num. <clears throat> right, so we are checking the angle between two options, right? So if you have two options, the angle should be uh, 180 degrees, that's 0 0.5. So that's what we're getting by going one divided by number of options. And then um, when we're setting the angle of an option, we're going to set the beginning angle. That's There's going to be a beginning angle for, from where we're where we starting drawing the options. That's ang. And we're gonna add i multiplied by the spacing of the options, basically, right? We could put this into a variable. I don't know what's, what's more of token efficient. Angle spacing, right? Uh, it costs us two tokens. So let's not do it. All right, so now that we have the angle, uh, we can calculate the position of the option because it's going to be based on an angle. Not it's going to, not going to be f a fixed option at a certain space, but we want maybe the options to be turning around the ship, which means we're going to use sine and cosine to calculate the position of the options. So it's going to be sine op ang multiplied with red x. Ta da! And then here is going to be plus cosine of ang multiplied by red y. That's going to be the, the y and the, like, because, you know, in the, in the x direction, the options might be going wider. And in the y direction, they're, they're going, maybe not going quite as wide. So we have like an, like an oval going, right? If they're going the same distance in both directions, then we would have the options to be doing like a perfect circle. But because this is like a perspective view, we want to kind of like make a bit of an oval because we're looking from above it, right, kind of. So we want to have maybe the option to modify how much of an oval it is. Right, so I think this is it. Let me copy this and let's fill it with some values. All right, so our org num animation. Now red x, I have something in here. I think 11 was good. Red y, I have something in here. Oh, it was like 11 divided by five. 
let's do that for now. It's not great. Um, and then, oh yeah, and then the basic angle. We're gonna start at 0 0.25. It, it totally works. It totally works. Did you see this? It's so amazing. And of course now, we can do, we can make this spin. That's, that's amazing. Okay, good. So this works. Um, I wanted to, I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but it's, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I want to maybe also do like a Y shift. <clears throat> y offset. Um, because the options are now circling and there should be always a circling on the center and on the X direction. But on the Y position, we might want to be able to say exactly where they are in the Y position. And in fact, I want to be able to control that a little bit. So let's go Y plus, Y off plus cosine of ink, right? And then uh, Y off is gonna be, I, again, these, these are things I figured out in prototype. Um, we're gonna go minus two. Yeah, so now they're a little bit further, um, further in front of the ship. This is very good. Uh, there's two issues that I want to fix before we get into the shots and that is you see how Well, first of all, we have the layer problem, right? Maybe we're gonna address that first and Then there's a bit of an issue. I'm um, let me let me stop the spinning for a second Do you see how the right option is is not exactly symmetrical with the left option? You see that? You see that? That's not good, right? And It's one of those issues because our ship is symmetrical, um, symmetrical amount of pixels. So there's actually no center pixel. So when we make them circle around the center pixel, I think that's the problem. Uh, it's a little bit offset by one pixel. Uh, so in order to do that, we need to offset one side by one pixel. Uh, it's one of those little details that we need to take care of. But for now, um, I want to maybe first do the, uh, the layers. So what I want to do is I want to draw I want to draw them two times. I know this is not great. We might later do it like a function for this, but we're going to go p dot layer equals one and draw object p. I, I will see if we can make this a little bit. Uh, so this is underneath and this is above, right? A lot of code added here. Two loops are repeating each other. This is not great. So layer two is gonna be above and layer one is gonna be below. Um, and then so the options need to have a layer when we create them, right? Uh, do we need the H by the way? We don't need the H, right? Oh, we do need the H, ooh. Oh no, we, we don't need the H, it's, it's layer. That's the problem. Whoops. Oh, we do need the H as well. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Uh, I don't know how to calculate the H. We have to figure that out later. <clears throat> Maybe we put T into H, how about that? So in case there's animation, there's gonna be something happening. Okay, good. So let us now make them spin again. And by the way, just like to make you to let you know, we can have now more than one option. We have two options here. Let's increase that to six options. Yes, yes. Let's go. Oh, don't be afraid. The biblically accurate schmuck. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Hundred is too much. Let's go sixty. Let's go. A little bit too much. Twenty. Yeah, so many options. Three, how does the um, three look? Ooh, that's nice, that's nice. All right, um, let's calculate the, the layers. So here, we can do something like, we can do something like, if cos op ang, layer equals cos op ang is smaller than zero and one or two. 
So it's a little bit, it's not great because we're calculating cosine twice per option, but we're not going to have that much much options anyway. It's it's a bit of a dirty solution here, but basically we are drawing the option in negative area, and that means the option is um, below. And it's exactly the opposite, but we can flip it. We can flip it by making this minus here. It's just bugging me now that it's going the wrong direction. Okay, let's flip it other. Oh, this this is so funny. No, wait, wait, wait. We can do it that, that way. We can make it this negative and we can make this negative. Oh, yes. Wait, did we fix this symmetry issue accidentally? Because it looks more symmetrical now. No, we did not. All right, so this is the, the option I'm, I'm used to. This is, this is the way this, this looked when I was playing the game. This is fantastic. Again, I'm not gonna make it spin all the time, just I wanna show, you know, show off how that works. By the way, I wanted to maybe see if we can maybe save some tokens here. Let's see if that works. Uh, 4144. What if we do something like P layer equals one and P? Does that work? And then in draw object, yes. So see, this is this is good. This allows us to be a little bit more efficient. How much? How many tokens did we save? We lost three tokens. <laughs> But uh, it's gonna be maybe better in the future. I don't know. Uh, this is this is embarrassing. But let's keep it like this. I like the the more compact writing. We lost tokens because there's like an if statement that we had to add to that. But I think it just adds a little bit uh, a robustness to our game. I think that's okay. So let's stop the spinning. And then when we create the options, so the problem is that here, right? So we want to make want to make sure that if up ang, if that's positive, we just add one. Um, so plus greater than zero and one. Something like this. I don't. I don't love it. Or zero. Yeah. See now. Now it's beautifully. Beautifully symmetrical. Maybe, wait, uh, let's let's do something like this. Because the problem I'm having is like when we are using negative things, it will flip around. Yeah, let's do something like if x dot, uh, we don't have a reference to that. Okay. Like this. Does it work? Oh, it does not work. Oh, maybe. Like this. A little bit better because now we can have negative x values and, and it will still work. Yeah, that's our that's our that's our options. That's how the options work. And now we can animate the options, the the, the speed, the options, the positions of the options, and so forth, by just changing this those parameters in here. And I think that's that's probably the easiest way of pulling them off. Maybe this stuff can be a bit optimized. I'm gonna put a star in here. But for now, let us move on to the shots. So obviously, now that I have the options here, I want the options to be shooting. The options are not shooting, they should be shooting. But I want them to be shooting different types of shots. So first, let's add those shots. I have a shot in here that I call the small shot. Um, let us drag and drop all of these. Uh, to remind you, all of these will be available uh, when you download the code in the doobly-doo. In the 
it doesn't fit. I mean, I could mirror it, right? But nah. I just put it on. It's a very long sprite. Oh, look, it fits so nicely in here. Let's put it in here. Um, maybe later on when we have all of the sprites there, we can, we can do some efficiency stuff. But for now, let's save this. Let's create a new sprite. Uh, sm shot S. Smil. It's going to be very tall. X is going to be zero. Going down here. Height is going to be this. Width is going to be this. This is good. Now OX and OY. Oops. I'm fix this. Ah. What is happening? All right. Yeah. Uh, OX is, I'm going to put it in here. So that's going to be OX. Uh, save, export. Now I'm going to create an animation for this. And this is one of those things that really, I don't know if this is necessary. Um, but let's just create one for, for this small shot. It's going to be 15. Because the other one also has, a, has an animation, right? The other shot, this is this one, also has an animation. Uh, this new shot doesn't have an animation. It's gonna be fine, but I could maybe add an animation, so that's why I may be adding it into the animation spread uh, spreadsheet. <clears throat> oh, this is so good. Um, right, so let's go to shoot. All right, so here's shooting. Um, so here we're adding the two base shots, and then, I mean, we just loop through the options and add the other shots, right? It's, what's the problem? For P in all popped. Goof. Right? And then we go, this is gonna do the same stuff that we have here for the options. Now, animation library is gonna be 15, or off the bat. The position of those will be um, P.x. Uh, are we doing a plus i here? We don't need that. Uh, and then p dot y. Um, this is good. We make them straight for now. Uh, Anis doesn't really matter. Age doesn't matter either because there's no animation, right? So let's set it to one. Um, in the collision, we're going to keep it around. And then we're going to do the this is the i see an issue the issue is that if we are uh, deleting the options every frame then then we cannot attach sprites to them that is an issue that's something we have to i haven't i haven't seen this coming for now let us do like a, yeah let's do like something like this for now and we're going to see later on how things will play out let's go zero zero here I just want to see something, right? Easy. Easy. Isn't that just beautiful? Ah, oh, so good. Immediately great. Immediately feeling great. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, while we're here, while we're here, uh, the, sp the ship speed, I, I found out that I want, I like the speed to be a bit, fa uh, ship to be a bit faster. So let's put it to, yeah, feels a lot better. Okay, uh, obviously the muzzle flashes are not exactly uh, aligned perfectly just yet. And also you see, there's, there's some little details I've been to figure out, but otherwise, okay, so let's get the, all the numbers right. All right, so off the bat, I want the muzzle flash to be minus four, to be a bit, a bit higher up. Let's see how that works. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Now here, this is the um, this is the sideways movement, right? I want to I want the, uh, the the options to be shooting a little bit of a spread shot, right? So let's go with something like one point one multiplied by sine mm, px minus um, pspr dot x. Right, so if px is greater, then we're gonna shoot in one direction, otherwise we're gonna shoot the other direction. Let's see if it works. Yeah, so it totally works. Ah, 
that just feels so good. And you know, you can make the spread wider and, and narrower depending on what you write in here. So if I make it four, 14, then we have like a really crazy wide shot. Uh, I think one point wine looks good um, because like at some point you saw the, the shots are very long so if you make them go sideways very fast and it looks very weird and you might have to change the, um, the animation. But yeah that's good. Now something I want to also fix is like now because I have some sprawl spread on the uh, option shots now there like there's a gap between the central shots and the spread shots it looks a little bit weird. I want to fill in this gap a little bit by, by making the Oh, by the way, no, I, for a second I, I saw some weird collision effect. Um, I want to make the central shots also a little bit spread out, so we have we have, have a more of an even even effect here, right? So here instead of uh, S X, we make might want to do something like sine i multiplied by I think I had it to something like zero point two. Very subtle. Yeah. See now it looks a lot more. A lot more, a lot nicer. And now, obviously, and that's that's the part that, that's really fun now is that you can animate those options if you want to. So here, you bring back the uh, the time. And now those options are also firing the shots, right? So you can see that you get like the double helix effect. Um, and you know what? If I look at, this, at the muzzle flash, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't really look as if it's as if it's lagging behind. It's a very short muzzle flash, and it's you know it's white anyway there, so you don't really even see that. So maybe we don't need that. But yeah, oh man, this this looks so good. Yeah, this is fun. This is fun stuff. All right, but I actually don't want the options to be moving around like this, you know? I don't want them to be uh, constantly circling my ship. What I want them to do is actually want to be banking with me. Um, and um, so I actually want to, depending on which animation sprite we are currently on with the, with our sprite, ship sprite, I want those options to be kind of like matching the banking of my, of my ship sprite, right? So we do something like local um, opt, opta, op, option angle, right? And then we're gonna uh, put the current ship sprite in here. So we're gonna go uh, PSPR dot ani. We're gonna take advantage of the fact, we're gonna take advantage of the fact that, um, you know, the very first sprites are actually the ship sprites. So we're gonna take the actual ship sprite that is currently happening, we're gonna go minus three. So if it's in the center, it's going to be zero. If it's completely banked, it will be, uh, I think it will be three. And then we have to multiply with some kind of number. So it's like, I don't know. I have figured out a number that's good, 0 0.04, right? <clears throat> like this. And then we add the opta in here. You can see how the options are now banking with, with the banking of our ship. And yeah, now I see a little bit the, uh, the, the muzzle flashes are not perfectly aligned. You can see that they also are not perfectly aligned in X direction because the muzzle flashes are uh, have an even number of pixels and the options have an uneven number of pixels. So we might actually want to maybe do a pass there later on when we have like a dedicated muzzle flash for the options, maybe a little bit smaller as well. And uh, so it all matches up perfectly. Uh, oh, but we also might want to add a... Maybe also you're going to use the same kind of trick that we're using with when you're positioning the options. So it's kind of like just like adding one, one or subtracting one. I don't know. It seems fine enough for me. So let's let's put that in the to-do list and then we are done here. Oh, by the way, I actually don't need the opta here, so I could save two tokens and just dump it all into this huge uh, option function here. But I think it's already such a big option, uh, such a big function. I don't want to put more complexity into this. Okay, so um, tweak option flashes, right? So the muzzle flashes are actually following the actual options and maybe actually make the all the muzzle flashes. 
uh, an uneven number of pixels so they match the the, muzzle, the actual options perfectly. But yeah, no, this is it. This is our. This is this is the game. And again, we, if you want to, we can make go focus fire or we can tweak the shot a little bit. Also, this entire shoot function. That is. There's plenty. There's plenty of optimization that we can do here. There's just like huge swaths of objects being created here. Oh my gosh. There's so much repetition here as well. Yeah, yeah, no, we can we can definitely do, do better later on. But for now, I'm not worried about that. Something I want to tweak as a last thing is I want to maybe tweak uh, the damage that the shots are doing. So let me see. We already have this, we already have the speed. Let's make it so that shot DMG. Uh, and again, I figured out a good value for this. I'm going to set it to 0 0.7, right? This is going to be the damage that the shots are doing. And then when we do a collision, uh, we're just going to subtract shot DMG. And then we can figure out what that's going to be. We might even have shots of different damage values. Maybe the option shots are doing slightly less damage. Maybe if you go into focus fire or if you do some kind of like activate some kind of special function, maybe the shots are getting stronger. It doesn't really matter, but yeah. Um, because we have now more bullets on the screen, I have to like reduce the shot damage a little bit. Yeah, oh man, this feels immediately very different. Good stuff! Finally, we are there and this is in fact the end of this episode. And like at the end of each episode, I would like to thank you and I would like to thank everybody who is uh, supporting this channel on coffee.com. Uh, there's a huge number of people who are following this channel and supporting the channel on coffee.com and making uh, this work possible. If you want to join in, uh, the address is coffee.com slash lazydevs. And I also wanted to answer a question, so uh, I have to dig a little bit de deeper because I haven't been posting videos in a while, so there's no not a lot of new comments that I have here, but here's uh, one of the uh, comment that I want to maybe talk about. This is from Brosfish1019 and they asked on the 15 shmups video that I did, about you know, 15 recommended shmups video, um, they asked is there a category name for those early 80s shmups like Galaga or Space Invaders? Because I had talked about classic shmups, right? And classic shmups are not Space Invaders. Classic shmups are uh, our type and, and Gradius and so forth. So what is even more classic than classic shmups, right? Uh, there is no good name for those actually. There's, there's no common name that we that uh, I've I've picked up in the community that are using them. Uh, I think some a, a good way to call them is maybe fixed shooters. Although not everybody will understand what you mean by this, but fixed shooters in the sense that there's no scrolling background. You just have a static screen and you're shooting stuff on a static screen. And that would allow you to get stuff in like Centipede as well, which I think fits into that universe as well. I think something like proto shmup might be a good term, but again, I don't know if anybody follows what, what a proto shmup is. And quite a lot of time I heard people just referring to them you know, shmups like Space Invaders, you know, like Space Invader likes. To make people understand like what kind of shmup, what kind of quality, what kind of sophistication of a shmup you're talking about. I think a lot of, like, everybody knows Space Invaders, so that's kind of like a very easy thing to reference. Yes, yes, yes. So, we did options, we upgraded our shots. What is next? Pickups. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.